I'm Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery in Scottsdale and Pine Top, Arizona, and this is a moment in art history. Today's painting is The Boating Party by Mary Cassatt. Mary Cassatt is one of the most notable American artists to emerge during the 19th century. She was described by French art critic Gustave Geffroy as one of the three great ladies of Impressionism, along with Marie Brockamond and Berthe Morisot. The Boating Party is one of Cassatt's best-known paintings, and it's also the culmination of many of her artistic influences. Cassatt painted the piece during the winter of 1893-94 to 94 in Antibes on the French Riviera. That year, she'd also completed the mural Modern Woman, commissioned for the Women's Building at the Chicago's 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, and the French government had just purchased one of her pieces for the Musée de Luxembourg. Throughout her career, Cassatt painted women and children, though she herself never married and was childless. Her subject matter was common for female artists before the 20th century, since painting subjects within their socially acceptable realm was a door to being accepted as a professional artist. Cassatt typically painted her subjects in more domestic settings, like interiors and gardens, so the boating party is a bit of an anomaly. The piece may have been influenced by a similar painting by Manet titled Boating. Cassatt had seen the piece at the Impressionist Exhibition of 1879 and liked it enough to convince her friend to buy the painting, so it's entirely possible that it could have inspired Cassatt's piece. Another major influence for the piece was Japanese woodblock prints. Cassatt had visited the great Japanese print exhibition in Paris in 1890, and like many of the Impressionists, she was struck by the Japanese style. She owned some prints by Kitagawa Utamaro. The clearest influence of Japanese woodblock art on Cassatt's piece is the decision to place the horizon at the top of the image. Mary Cassatt was born in Allegheny City, Pennsylvania, which is now part of Pittsburgh. Her father, Robert Simpson Cassatt, was a successful stockbroker and land speculator, and her mother was the educated and well-read daughter of a banker. Cassatt's mother was an important influence for the budding artist. Education was highly valued in the Cassatt home, and Cassatt's parents believed that travel was an integral part of a good education. When she was young, Cassatt embarked on a five-year tour of Europe, learning German and French along the way and taking her first lessons in drawing. She also likely saw the work of many French artists at the Paris World's Fair of 1855. It wasn't long before she fell in love with art and became determined to support herself as a professional artist. Though her family discouraged her from pursuing this path, she began studying at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts when she was 15 years old. About 20% of the students at the academy were women, but most of them were interested in art as a social skill rather than a profession. Cassatt continued her studies there from 1861 to 1865, the duration of the American Civil War, but a growing impatience with the lack of opportunities for her as a female student prompted her to leave. In 1866, Cassatt moved with her mother to Paris. Since women couldn't attend the École des Beaux-Arts at the time, Cassatt studied privately with one of the Academy's instructors. When she wasn't with her instructor, Cassatt was often in the Louvre copying the works of the old masters and socializing with other artists. In 1868, one of her paintings, a mandolin player, was accepted for the first time by the selection jury for the Paris Salon. In 1870, the Franco-Prussian War broke out and Cassatt returned to Pennsylvania, where a lack of support, buyers, and great works to copy almost caused her to put down her brushes for good. Thankfully, an opportunity soon arose for Cassatt to travel back to Europe, and after a few more years of navigating the salons and developing her skills, she accepted an invitation from Dugas to exhibit with the Impressionists. Cassatt admired Dugas' work, and he became an important friend and mentor. Cassatt was an active member of the Impressionists until 1886, participating in a number of their exhibitions. 
She sold some of her work there and used her share of the profits to purchase work from Monet and Degas. Cassatt began to move away from Impressionism in the mid-1880s, taking a simpler, more straightforward approach with her work, as we see in The Boating Party. By this time, she'd gained a high level of acclaim and was showing her work not only in Europe, but also in New York galleries. She continued to paint prolifically until her failing health and near blindness forced her to stop in 1914. Cassatt died in 1926 at the age of 82. My wife Carrie and I visited the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. in 2017 and particularly enjoyed seeing the boating party and learning about Cassatt. Mary Cassatt is another great example of an artist who was willing to break societal norms to pursue her passion in art. Her work can now be seen in museums around the world and her art has inspired many artists and art lovers who came after her. I would love to hear your impressions of the boating party and Cassatt's other art. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining me for another moment in art history. If you enjoyed this bit of art history, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, or sign up for my newsletter to be notified about future art history videos.